So morning everybody and um, thanks for joining us today for Financing the Future, our webinar in collaboration with Grant Thornton and YPO. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit of housekeeping now, just, just around how it's all going to work and then there'll be a brief agenda and we'll, we'll get started. Okay, so um, please note that the webinar is going to be recorded and it is being recorded. So if you don't want to appear on the camera or anything like that, then please make sure that your camera is off um, and then obviously that won't appear. There will be an opportunity for YPO to share at, at some point in the webinar so that if there's any more people that couldn't attend that you want to share it with, then that's fine. Um, it should last with, between 45 minutes to an hour. Um, but that obviously is dependent on questions and stuff at the end. And obviously, if you do have any questions, then feel free to add these to the Q&A function on Zoom. And Lloyd will be managing these throughout. And obviously, if you feel like the questions press in at any point, then please raise your hand and we'll get to you and um, answer your question as best we can. Um, but yeah, if everyone's happy, I'll move on and we'll go to the agenda. So um, we'll talk through a little bit of who is here today um, and then YPO, Lucy from YPO um, will do a brief presentation as to around how everything works for them and then there'll be an input from us at Consultancy Plus. Grant Thornton will do their presentation and then there'll be some question and answers at the end. And obviously, like I've said, if you do feel like you've got any questions that you do want to raise throughout, then please do. There's, there's no set format as such. We're happy to answer any questions that you might have. So the panel today are made up of people, like I've said, from Consultancy Plus, YPO and Grant Thornton. So from Consultancy Plus, there's Elsa, Lloyd and myself, Lucy from YPO, and then from Grant Thornton. Oh, unfortunately, sorry, Kabini, your name's, your name's slightly cut off, but there's Kabini, Helen and Wayne from Grant Thornton. We'll do full introductions at each stage of the presentation. Um, and then I'll pass you over to Lucy at YPO, if you're happy to start, Lucy. Hi, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. So I probably know a few people that are, that are um, on the call today, but if not, so um, just to introduce myself, I'm Lucy Simpson. I'm the category manager for HR services at YPO. Um, so I've been here quite a few years now managing our HR services team. Um, so just a bit about YPO, if you don't know who we are already, which probably a lot of you might, might know. Um, so we are... Um, been going for around 45 years now so we've got a wide range of customers within public sector procuring various products and services across all our portfolio we're 100% publicly owned by 13 local authorities and then we've got um, associate members as well um, in the mix so that means all our profits go back into the, our public sector customers so we're not for profit we've got a large choice of leading suppliers on our frameworks and products and we can pretty much offer nearly everything possible you'd need to run your own successful um, procurements in your organisations. Um, so yeah, you can go to the next slide please, Hannah, thank you. So just to give you a bit of a brief overview of the YPO framework and how that sort of sits with, with this solution um, and why we're here today as well. So um, we've got an overarching framework in place, which these are the key sort of bits of information on the screen now. Um, because this framework is in its second iteration, really. So about six years ago, we had um, an all-encompassing HR framework, which had an aspect of consultancy within that framework. And we saw that it evolved so much and we learned that consultancy was needed to sit as a standalone arrangement because it was getting asked about in different ways from a lot of our customer base. So it really did evolve. So in 2019, we started doing the research and development into um, a new solution, which then became the Managing Consultancy and Professional Services. So we moved it away from our recruitment side and we gave it its own national framework provision to sit on its own. So it went live um, in October 2019 and it runs until... Um, in September 2023. So it's awarded to Consultancy Plus as our managed service provider. They sit there and, and over actually manage that agreement um, in partnership with us. So we've got a quite strong strategic relationship uh, working together. 
So because it's due to expire next year now, we are starting to work on the strategy and the development for the renewal. So we are starting to think about what does the future um, of consultancy need to look like? What are we thinking about for, our, for the future of the agreement? Do we need to change it dramatically? Is it working well? So there's sort of lots of things that we're all talking about together about the future. Any of the call-offs that are in place at the moment will, will and can go on beyond the life of the current agreement. So um, just to reassure people that just because the framework ends next year doesn't mean to say everything ends that's currently in place. Um, and because it's a, a national framework, it's open to all public sector customers and they're all listed on there as well. So with it, within the, the whole of the solution, it covers a, a variety of different um, consultancy and professional solutions to meet many different requirements um, across what your organisation might need. Um, so you can move on to the next slide, thank you. So just to give a bit of a visual really of how the solution is set up and how we manage it. So we class it as a managed service provision just because we've got that one provider sat there managing the solution, which is obviously Consultancy Plus. So we carried out the OGU compliant procurement process and we appointed them as our single provider to deliver the provision of all the different types of services. Um, so it can be used by a contracting authority to deliver a single consultancy project or to deliver all of your contracting authority needs. So it can be used in very different different ways. Um, so there could be like quick wins or bigger projects. So obviously Consultancy Plus will talk a lot more about that as well with you um, later. And um, we can follow up with anything, any sort of further questions around that as well. So they do have the ability to use their own supply chain and they've got obviously access to, to many different organisations as well that they can um, offer you different, different sort of re requirements really. Um, and just one thing really to remember is that we're here to support, so YPO is here to support you in the first instance, but also Consult Consultancy Plus are here as well. So as I say, we work in partnership, we're all here to support you and find the right solution for your requirements. So that's sort of giving you a bit of a, an overview, um, a broad overview, overview of the uh, of the solution really. So probably sort of leads nicely into the fact that we're passing over to Consultancy Plus, so they're going to talk to you a bit about uh, sort of how it works. Um, so I'll hand over to Elsa, I think it is. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you, Lucy. Um, thanks, Hannah, as well. So good morning to everyone. My name's Elsa Hegarty, um, and I um, head up the services procurement team in Consultancy Plus. And um, on this slide, you can see the agenda that we're going to go through. The first thing I wanted to say, though, before we talk about the agenda is why we're doing these sessions um, and, and how we hope to support. So we are seeing more and more that organisations within the um, public sector have very well defined and mandated routes to market for their temp and their perm, but less so for their for their um, you know contingent uh, sorry their consultancy and their statement of works. So contingent and perm seems to be very well established, but less established as to how a manager or procurement might want to engage in terms of consultancy spend. So um, that's where we come in. Um, as Lucy's gone through, we have the, um, the YPO framework, which is enabled and ready to be used. It's a very simple process, which we will go through with you. Um, but what we're looking at is, is that statement of work and cons consultancy spend, which does sometimes tend to be hidden. Um, and it's the world that we're in. So it's always the other space that we work in. Um, and the why in terms of the, the supply session that we're talking about today, um, Hannah, um, who did the introduction, thank you, Hannah, um, she leads and manages um, our supplier engagement. So she will look at the suppliers that we need to work with and who do we need to have on that supply chain. Um, and it, it's absolutely key that we keep that supply chain as robust as possible for our clients. And hence why today we're gonna to be looking at the work that Grant Thornton have done, because if we have the very best suppliers on there that are the most applicable um, and right for the UK market and the work that you're doing, um, it means that it, it makes the process much easier. We will go through a couple of bits in terms of you can always come to us and say we've got a known supplier we know somebody we'd like to work with but equally so Hannah will work incredibly hard to make sure that supply chain is fit for purpose for you so that's why we're here to, today um, and just wanted sort of to, to go through that a little bit with you so introduction to consultancy plus so I won't go on too much about this because I know this can be sometimes the boring bit um, but we um, are part of the read group and for me, um, what that means is, is that you have the legacy um, and the support um, and that sort of scope and, and scalability that Reed offer, but actually Consultancy Plus are a standalone organisation and we are absolutely dedicated to what we do. So all we do is statement of work and consultancy and outcome work. 
So we are um, very closely, you know, closely work with Reed, but we are standalone and absolutely um, skilled and experienced in what we do. Um, you have, um, Hannah's already sort of mentioned a couple of people. So you've got myself that um, actually uh, manages the services procurement team, which is probably the main team that you would deal with if you're thinking about engaging via a framework like YPO. You also have Lloyd um, and also Hannah, as you said. And we'll go through a little bit about what each of us do um, as we as we speak, but I manage and, and um, um, uh, the services procurement team. So um, solutions wise. So we talked about a little bit about how you can come to us. And, and this is how I'm going to really speak very basic because I like it like this. If you have um, a contract or a project that needs to be delivered, you can pick the phone up and talk to us about the fact that you need to get that delivered and it's likely to be via a statement of work or a consultancy type agreement. Um, and that can be for a range of work. Lucy's already touched upon the areas that we tend to cater for. Um, and you can ring us or you could email us and say, actually, I've got this work and I've got a known supplier that we've used lots of times, we'd like to work with them. And that's perfect. So we do have that solution that we, we tend to call it that known supplier route. Equally, you can contact us and go, I've, we, we know we've got some work that needs to be delivered um, and it's not going to be via Temple Perm person. It's definitely going to be consultancy type work, but we don't know who would like to deliver that. Can you help us? And absolutely, that's where Hannah would step in and look at the what you're looking for and look at the, the specialist um, support that you would need and we'd reach out to our supply chain. Equally so, we could go out to new supplies for you as well because it could be a niche area. Um, Lucy and I were looking at, at Fleet, for example, and we know that we need to build our supply chain in that place. So Hannah will absolutely do that. So we will understand your needs and look either if we need to build that supply chain or we would approach suppliers that we've worked with. Um, and then the third route will often be that um, uh, somebody will come through to us again. That we, we know the work that needs to be completed, but they may well want to vend that out and actually run a, a small sort of commercial piece, you know, to actually put that out there to a number of providers. So we're looking then at who's going to be providing the best quality, who's best meeting your needs. Um, and we can absolutely you know work through that with you and that's very much um lloyd's world well he will support you in that so it could be that you have a mandate in your business that over a certain spend it has to go out to more than one supplier and it's also a very good way to think about cost efficiencies um, and cost uh, avoidance and to look at also um, look at that benchmarking so we will be absolutely drive cost efficiencies for you so in terms of solutions the key there is always pick up the phone send an email talk to us um, and we will absolutely work out what solution is best for you uh, um, and in terms of costs it is all one cost so there is no difference if you ask us to do um, you know a more complex piece that we're going to be vending out um, and in terms of the supply chain um, and we've touched upon that already, but um, it's Hannah's uh, role to make sure that we have that diverse supply chain and that it is actually um, in terms of understanding your pipeline um, and the work that is going on within the public sector. Hannah is very uh, focused on that. Hannah, is there anything you want to add regarding the supply chain and the work that you do? Um, I don't think so, else, actually. You've actually explained it. Yeah, re yeah really clearly. So thank you. No, no worries. Great. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Hannah. Um, so I'm just going to, if you could go on to the next slide for a moment, I'm going to talk process. And again, I don't want to bore you too much, but what I want you, I'd like you to take away from this. It is a very simple process. So the first thing, if you sat there again, uh, you, you may already work with YPO or you may not, you may never have worked with YPO. But the first thing that we always have to make sure is that as a client and an organization, you're signed up to the YPO framework. So we will make sure that happens with you. You can either come straight through to somebody like myself, Lloyd, Hannah, or you can go through to Lucy and the team at YPO. And we would start that conversation and release that contract so you can have a look at it. From my point of view, I always like to think that it is quite a, a simple um, contract. It's not a contract that we have too many um, queries about, but obviously you'd need to look at that and make sure that you're happy to sign up. What I will say at this point is there are other frameworks available. And I know I sound like I'm on TV saying there are other, there are other services available. There absolutely is other frameworks. Um, and I think that um, certain organisations um, will be have allegiance to different types of frameworks that they're going to be using. It might be that your organisation particularly talks about one framework. 
I think do we would always ask you to think about um, who you engage with and who you're going to get the sort of best sort of you know efficiencies from in terms of costs and the best values from but the YPO one and particularly Lucy has said covers so many different areas if you're looking at purchasing generally but if you are in that space where you're thinking about statement of work consultancy you can come to us as a one-stop shop and in terms of we can then obviously um, look at the suppliers for you and what's best for you so the first thing we also have to do is make sure that you signed up to YPO um, and then the next bit is understanding what you're looking for. So we would make sure we'd work with you. And even that bit can be a bit daunting. I find for clients sometimes just sort of taking a step back and thinking, actually, what do we want done? How are we going to put this into an order? How are we going to look at milestones? We will absolutely help you with that. Um, the other way is if you absolutely know what you're doing, we do have a self-serve system. So you could go onto that and literally, you know, punch in the details and off we go. But either way, you can either have that, that tech solution or you can be absolutely, we will support you through it. So we'll understand and you'll understand what you want to do. And then we'll make sure that the supply that you want to work with is onboarded and they've signed everything they need to and they're all ready to go. And then it's about putting the two things together. So making sure that everyone has their contracts and everyone knows what they need to do in order so you can be absolutely 100% sure that your work is going to be delivered to the quality that you um, dictate and deserve and also to the price and also within the timing so that we're all set everything then goes onto a system and then it's a kickoff meeting that Hannah will often sort of reach out to the, to the supplier and the client. We can do all of this incredibly quickly. So um, there are situations that we will go through this within 24 hours. And definitely so where you've already signed up to YPO, it's obviously a quicker process. And we deal with um, companies throughout the UK, so private and public sector. Um, obviously with the YPO, uh, we're dealing with the public sector and many of the organisations and probably many of you are already signed up to YPO. So it's always a much quicker process then. It's about understanding what you want to do, making sure we've got the supplier on board um, and, and putting that together. So in terms of process, I know that um, we work hard to make sure that is quick, simple and seamless. We could just go back, Hannah. Thank you. Great. You read my mind there. Um, so I've touched upon a little bit about clients there. We pretty much have uh, the majority um, of uh, you know, authorities um, and local government um, organisations. So the, the, the public sector is definitely a, a place that we're very familiar with. Um, and um, so many of you will already be sort of signed up and working with us. Um, but don't be put off if you if not, you know, I would ask you have a look at the way that you're, uh, you're engaging and look at the frameworks um, and do have those conversations with us. But in terms of client base, um, we are um, very sort of happy with uh, the position we have, the relationships that we have throughout the um, throughout the UK. Um, the commercials. I wanted to touch upon these. So, again, when you're looking at frameworks, it is, you know, one of the things you're going to look at is the commercial. So how expensive is it? How, what does it look like? Some things I want to sort of sort of put out there, maybe think about. The biggest uh, inquiry we're seeing at the moment and have seen since Christmas is organisations approaching us because they have hard to fill roles that might sit under typically 10 per perm, um, but they're going, we're not filling them because we know the market is incredibly difficult. It's very um, applicant driven market at the moment. Um, and it could be fields like we're talking about maybe care, um, transport and infrastructure, transformation, uh, procurement, uh, IT. So those areas we're having um, clients approaching us um, and saying we're, we're struggling to fill these roles in the traditional route. So um, that's the number one inquiry Lloyd and I are dealing with at the moment. And in terms of looking at that, it's not always going. Actually, it's going to be far more expensive for me to use a consultant. And I do, I understand, I've been in this industry a long time. And always, I always thought that the consultancy route was always a bit posher than Temp and Perm. And it was always a bit more elitist. and It was always more expensive. Well, actually, we are looking at ways of trying to um, look at the different in, in the value and thinking about how actually you could um, use consultancy services in a cost effective way so definitely in terms of the commercials it's thinking about not necessarily it's always more expensive route um, but thinking about how you can get the value in there and how we can help you to understand that but in terms of what you will actually pay with us it's four and a half percent charge on anything that's agreed with the supplier so whatever your work looks like um, or your project we will confirm that with you and then it's only a four and a half percent charge that you're going to be seeing on that and some of that 
four and a half percent goes back into YPO, um, obviously. Um, so it's all very um, sort of uh, transparent, uh, and I think it's important to go through the commercials. I think when you're looking at other frameworks, there are some more expensive than us, um, uh, but it is like you know, uh, totting that all up and looking at uh, looking at that. The way that we would actually be um, charging and organising that is, as we've already alluded to, um, the order and all your requirements will go onto our bespoke system so you can log on you can see everything very um, again transparent and very organized so you can look at your own mi your own dashboard and see exactly what you're spending and what engagements you've got in place and if you're the supplier um, you can absolutely see all, again all your engagements and you can invoice via the system and you can see when that's approved so in terms of it being uh, tech enabled it is that and it means that you've got that transparency but uh, in terms of commercials we don't charge our suppliers anything um, to be to, to on board with us. So they are the key areas. I'm just checking my notes I wanted to go through with you, but I'm just going to reach back out to Lloyd. Um, Lloyd, is there anything on those those bits and those topics that you'd like to go through in a bit more detail? One thing you'd like to add, Lloyd? Um, I think well sums up. I think for, for us, it's we are in a privileged position to kind of speak with quite a number of sort of stakeholders, whether that be sort of client facing or sort of supplier facing, and we're not solely in, in the public sector to sort the of private also so I think we, we marry lots of experiences to try and get the solution to the right so I think we're always with open ears and sort of trying to take um, whoever whoever it might be sort of through that journey uh, and sort of simplify it so absolutely here to support in any way we can. Yeah and I think Lucy would um, agree that we are um, quite a personable bunch quite you know quite normal quite happy to help um, and we have a great relationship, great partnership um, with the YPO team. Um, and again, um, we we're able to reach out to Grant Thorn to one of our suppliers, and they were quite, you know, very keen to, to, to attend today and to deliver to deliver this webinar with us. Um, we will be doing other webinars. So if you like this, you know, do um, do tune in in a few months' time. We're going to every few months look at the key um, suppliers and what's going on in the market and what people want to hear about. So we will be doing those um, sort of in the coming months, and we will let you know. But I think, unless anyone's got any questions, um, Lloyd, have you any, had anything in yet? Then, then I'm happy to pass over uh, to Wayne and Kabini and Helen, um, who we have from Grant Thornton. Perfect. Thank you, Elsa. Yeah. Um, so um, we're going to um, do some introductions. Um, Helen, Wayne and myself will um, introduce ourselves and tell you a bit about what we do. We'll talk a bit about then what our wider team does, the Public Services Advisory Team. And then we'll go into a couple of case studies as well. Um, so myself, I'm Kabini. I'm an Associate Director within Grant Thornton's Public Services Advisory Team. And my primary focus is economics. So um, I help local government, central government and other public sector organisations carry out economic um, analysis or appraisal in a variety of settings and different contexts. So this could include looking at analysis at a local or place-based level to really understand what key socioeconomic metrics are telling us about a particular area and that can help us identify opportunities where we can help develop the area. Or it could be kind of looking at more um, benefits at a more national level. So, for instance, we do business cases um, for um, case studies such as the redevelopment of hospitals, which then are then go, go on to then get submitted to Treasury for funding. And we also help in terms of the wider policy development process, which where economic appraisal fits in. But I'll leave that for the case study later. Um, and prior to working at Grand Thornton, I worked in the civil service as a government economist for seven years. Helen, do you want to go next? Thanks, Kabini. Good morning, everyone. My name is Helen Dreiber. I'm a manager within our public services advisory team. Um, I was previously part of our external audit team at Grant Thornton, so working with um, a lot of NHS and council clients within the northwest of England, which is where I'm based. Um, now I'm part of our public services advisory team and have been for a few years now. Um, in particular, I sit within our real estate team, so we support clients with a lot of large-scale capital programmes and procurement um, for example, business cases around fundraising and um, recently with the Leveling Up Fund and Future High Street Fund, we've supported a number of clients in writing their business cases to try and get access to some of that funding. Um, and we also support with um, redevelopment of things like town centres um, and place based. Um, I'll pass over to my colleague, Wayne. 
Thank you, Helen. Uh, morning all, Wayne Butcher. I'm a director in Grant Thornton's Public Services Advisory Team and I lead um, the real estate team, um, which obviously Helen sits in as she just touched upon. Um, just in terms of Grant Thornton's um, wider services across public services advisory, we cover not just real estate, but also infrastructure, healthcare, uh, wider consulting, but also financial modelling. And as both Helen and Cabini touched upon, um, we tend to work with clients playing into either key local agendas or equally um, wider national agendas so hence items such as leveling up um, integrated care services infrastructure rail and all those things which you often will see on the news in terms of key investments into wider uh, capital and infrastructure that tends to be a core area and focus of our team um, but i won't say much else because i don't want to steal kabini and helen's thunder on the case studies and i'll pass back over to kabini Thank you, Wayne. Um, uh, yeah, thank you, Wayne. Just kind of building on where what Wayne um, just said about what our team does, we will just go into kind of our four areas of expertise. So, um, talking about consulting, we help government organisations to improve their financial and/or operational performance and public service outcomes. And this could be through net cost improvements, effective delivery of change programmes, and data-driven decisions and appraisal. With advisory, we support the economic and efficient delivery of services and projects within um, sectors such as Wayne mentioned. Such such as infrastructure, healthcare, et cetera. And this could include advising on public-private partnerships, capital program funding, financing and delivery, M&A and project structures. Then in terms of analytics, um, we support clients with financial modelling and analytics services. Um, we have some data analytics platforms, which are actually now used by over a thousand public service professionals. Um, and those platforms are used to improve financial performance within their organisation or to advise on service outcomes. Um, in terms of assurance, um, programme projects, and contract execution and the performance of business partners um, is really significant and can have a huge impact on costs, operational delivery, and the ability to realize opportunities and strategic objectives. And um, so we take a real whole life approach to assurance um, and have a look at projects from the very start at that contract stage and um, all the way through to project development and execution. So moving on to case studies. Um, thank you, Hannah. So I will talk about Wakefield Council. So we worked with them very recently, actually. So February, March of this year, we supported them by carrying out a review of their capital investment procedures and processes with a focus on the following three strands. So prioritization being the first one. Um, and this is prioritizing capital investment proposals. And this is thinking about how this fits in with the council's wider strategic and operational priorities to ensure maximum impact within the constraints of an affordable capital program and the affordability angle being quite key here. Um, there's the appraisal of quantifiable and non-quantifiable benefits and articulating these and presenting these and monetizing these as part of investment appraisal decisions from inception to approval and monitoring and evaluating to then subsequently monitor the achievement of these outcomes and benefits. Um, so our approach to this work is we had various strands. We carried out a document review of existing documentation within the council and central government um, guidance. We held a consultation exercise and carried out 10 interviews with key officers from the finance, corporate landlord and services teams. And we undertook a process review and gap analysis of the existing capital framework. So what this actually enabled us to do was to identify opportunities where the council could improve their processes. And as part of this, we then developed six products for the council to use throughout their capital framework. Um, Hannah, could you turn the slide, please? Thank you. Um, so I'll just run you through the six different products and how, um, how they've helped the council with their capital framework. So the prioritization tool, so this is essentially an Excel tool that helps, ranks, helps to rank new capital proposals. And this was underpinned by the council's investment priorities and additional criteria such as the Treasury's Green Book critical success factors. And essentially this is really important because when we're thinking about um, affordab affordability constraints and um, wanting to make sure that we're picking um, picking projects, not kind of on a whim or based on just political priorities, but we're being really strategic about how we're prioritizing and picking these projects and ensuring that they're value for money. So this is really crucial at the start of any sort of any sort of capital investment process. We then developed a theory of change guide, and this is important because it helps to ensure that 
when we are picking a project or proposal, at an early stage of the process, any inputs or activities that we're presenting, such as, for instance, let's build a new road, it actually maps and has a causal link to generating the longer term social and economic benefits that the, that the organization wants to achieve. So we want to, if it's, for instance, increase in jobs or increase in skills, we want to be able to map these inputs and activities to clear outputs, outcomes, and then wider impacts at the early stage to make sure that we are picking the right projects. We then developed a benefits methodology guide. So this outlines the key benefits for capital projects. And we outlined clear step by step as to how we can then go about monetizing these benefits that could then be used for economic appraisal. So some examples include, you know, reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. And this is really important now in terms of the central government agenda with net zero. Job creation another is another example. Land value uplift, which again is very kind of thinking about housing and public realm benefits, productivity skills uplifts. And appraisal is really important because it's a way of um, ranking options against each other. And it's a way of being able to measure options that might not be um, easily comparable. For instance, you know, if we want to build a new school or we want to build a new road, if we're able to monetize these benefits such and, and we're talking about also social and economic benefits, not just financial benefits, it's a way of being able to actually come up with a number and say we can actually rank these against each other. And so this is this is how economic appraisal could um, could um, help in that process. We then. Um, updated the council's existing template for capital proposals to include details on economic and evaluation details. We then also presented, um, in, introduced an evaluation planning guide. So essentially this was a checklist of questions to use when planning evaluations and an indicator list with sources that could be used to measure benefits because we want to ensure that any project that we are delivering or that we are implementing um, is actually being evaluated and making sure that it's still consistently value for money whether it has to be tweaked, amended, or even maybe scrapped if we think a better project is coming through. And finally, we developed a proportionality guide, and essentially this just outlines the level of detail that's required to ensure um, that the time spent is proportionate to the cost. So for instance, you wouldn't want to spend 10 days developing an economic appraisal. Um, um, you wouldn't want to spend the same amount of time developing an economic appraisal for a one million pound project versus a 10 million, um, 10 million pound project, for instance. Um, in terms of the outcome of this work, it's really facilitated conversations and at a senior level um, and a commitment within the council to, on really changing and improving the current process. So they're exploring the best approach to engage with elected members to gain collective agreement and buy-in on the new process. And there's been conversations as part of our recommendations to think about piloting this, piloting this as an approach across um, a period of time and also um, thinking about capacity building as well. So the council is carrying out a number of other reviews. And as mentioned, you know, we've just completed this very recently. And once the other reviews have completed, they'll be thinking about wider implementation as well. So. Um, we were, um, were quite excited to see how this all unfolds. So that's Wakefield Council. And I think Helen will talk us through the next case study. Great. Um, thanks, Kabini. So Pendleton's Gather Operating Limited um, are a client that Grant Thornton have worked with for a number of years now. Um, and we frequently work very closely with the management team as well as um, the finance team there. Um, Pendleton Together Operating Limited have a PFI with Salford Council um, with the aim of delivering affordable housing in the Pendleton area of Salford. And um, so originally um, our role was very much supporting them with the financial model around um, the PFI and um, translating the financial model for people who may not understand modelling or be from a finance background because a lot of the time they can be particularly complex. Um, but the work that we've done a lot with them recently is since the tragedy at Grenfell um, and the realisations around some of the materials used on the buildings and the increased um, sort of look on fire safety. Um, a lot of the buildings um, under this PFI scheme realised that they either had similar cladding or um, some fire safety issues. And so we've been supporting them more recently on how are they going to address this? What are they going to do to ensure that all of their buildings are up to code? Um, but from a finance point of view, um, so in terms of how much of these works going to cost, how are they going to finance them? Um, the complex for Pendleton together is that there are a number of stakeholders involved. So you've got Petold themselves, of course, um, the residents that live in those buildings who are obviously very keen um, and 
really want to make sure this gets resolved. Um, they are their investors into the business um, and also the loans that they have outstanding. Um, so what we have done is had a look at how much are the costs going to be to ensure that these buildings are up to code and how are these costs going to be met? Is it going to be through additional financing, perhaps from South Council? Would it be um, taking out additional loans? What is the impact of those financing? How is it made how do they ensure that the funding is used to meet those objectives but also in terms of interest rates how do they achieve value for money and um, what we've done a lot of is taken the financial model put those inputs in that have been provided to us from Pendleton together we've had a look at the outputs shared those with the clients and a lot of the time created board papers or board packs so that the, that information can be communicated clearly and concisely um, to those that need to understand it. Um, this client is really great for us as well because we've worked with not just the public services advisory area of Grant Thornton but our tax team are also heavily involved in this so what are the tax implications of those costs of the spending, any additional loans but also the way the financing works between Salford Council, Pendleton together and their parent company. Um, and then with this, you also have the um, technical accounting complica complications. So we have a specialist team at Grant Thornton who have supported that to make sure that everything is um, reported accurately um, in terms of their financial statements. Thank you, Helen. And thank you, Kabini. Um, that's great. I just wanted to add, actually, just, just for like interest, the Wakefield project was actually um, fulfilled using our framework. Um, so that was a small competition piece, just so that obviously everybody that's attending is aware. And we did a small competition for Wakefield and then Grant Thornton were appointed to do that piece of work via the framework. So it's great to work. Yeah together and and speak about these projects and that just is a good example of how we've used it along with one of our clients dear to, to fulfill this piece of work to a really good standard um we'll move move on and at this stage we're at the question stage so if anybody has any questions at all for any of us any of the presenters for obviously consultancy plus ypo or grant thornton then please add them to the q a section and we'll work through as many of those as we can get through um do we know if we've got any already at all lloyd i think you're mute, Lloyd. Apologies, that helped. Thank you. Uh, so for anyone that's having any challenges with the q and if you sort of fire those questions directly to me. I've got a couple of uh, been sort of directed prior to this and also a couple have come directly in. So I've got one, actually probably easy to go upstream um, to the uh, guest from Grant Thornton. So in terms of your projects, is it wide and varied in terms of sort of project values that you might typically work on? So in terms of the, the typical engagements you work on, is it wide and varied in terms of, sort of project values? that you work on. Do you, do you want me to take that one, Kabine and Helen? Yes, um, please. Um, so I think in terms of the value of the projects, um, I suppose in terms of a minimum from a grant form to perspective, anything sort of sub £20,000, it probably sort of gets to the point where there isn't necessarily an enormous amount we can sort of do for that just in terms of making it work from, from our own business perspective. But in terms of then going upwards from that, there is no sort of um, hard and fast rules. Um, I think the other piece is to sort of add it's not just about size and value but where let's say a client comes to um uh, ypo or consultancy plus and actually there's a mix of let's say not just finance but let's say technical support potentially wider property support we'll then also put forward other partners that we'll work with to meet parts of the engagement that we wouldn't typically do so for example rick's valuations um cost consultancy and so on so um in terms of value um, no sort of hard and fast rules for, apart from it not being too small um, but then equally in terms of the breadth piece um, it, it doesn't just have to be about financials but actually we we're, we're keen to sort of bring the team that's needed in terms of that multidisciplinary approach and obviously working with YPO and Consultancy Plus where required to do that. Brilliant thank you very much for that Wayne. Uh, there is actually a second part to that question which I um, for authorities that might not, and I think we probably get this quite often, certainly in terms of inquiries into to the framework, um, 
So for authorities that might not believe that they have an immediate need, what would you say is a sort of critical first point uh, or area of discussion um, in brackets, what key services, i.e. economic evaluation or sort of financial, financial modelling, uh, where would that conversation begin? Um, so I suppose, I think probably to sum up, um, if, uh, if an authority doesn't believe that they have an immediate need, I mean, what sort of things are, are, are and often sort of things that you will sort of put to authorities in terms of opportunity, sort of a uh, high grant Thornton? I suppose it's probably sort of twofold on that. So um, on one side of the coin, there's the piece around um, where there's challenges from a resource perspective in terms of an authority. So it's a case of they need help pulling together a business case, an application for, let's say, um, a levelling up fund application, future high street. Um, so we see a lot of those types of pieces where actually it's a case that we just need a pair of hands who can help digest the information that we've got and sort of pull that document together. Um, so we see quite a lot in that in that area. On the other sort of side of the coin, we will see a lot where authorities will be preparing those documents themselves. So whether it's a business case for a, a particular intervention they want to take forward, but they're actually after then in an independent set of eyes to sort of kick the tyres on that. So, um, so to sort of summarise, we do a lot of the doing in terms of, let's say, pulling together written documents, financial modelling, specific advice in terms of, let's say, tax accounting. Equally, we do quite a bit of review work in terms of almost diligence type assignments, where it's about sort of going over the numbers, flagging if there's any issues in terms of the integrity and logic to those. But also that brought, we do a lot of a broader piece around a lot of risk analysis. So actually making sure that, um, let's say, board members, as Helen touched upon, members of councillors, elected um, officials and so on, are really clear on not just the opportunity, but all the, also the risks involved in some of those projects and making sure that I suppose, each turn, um, each stone is, is, is turned over to make sure that they can make an informed decision, which um, officers then can point to external third party advice has been sourced to give a broader picture. And it's not just sort of a small um, number of individuals in terms of those thinking. So. I think where it tends to come into, well, I suppose where we tend to be able to add the most value, not just obviously sort of the typical technical side in terms of tax and accounting, but actually just that sort of breadth and depth of thinking, given we tend to see lots of examples and challenges across authorities all over the country, really. And it's about being, being able to bring those war stories, lessons learned and all that sort of good stuff to um, sort of add further value, really. That's Lloyd, right. I, I know you've got a few questions there. Could I ask a question to Wayne? Because I'm quite interested in, 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 in generally, I'm, I'm interested in this levelling up, which I'm reading about and seeing everywhere. What would be your advice to authorities at the moment um, regarding, uh, regarding this? Um, I, th I think the key piece is probably staying up to date in terms of the various updates that are coming through from central government. So there's a number of different pots of money. So sort of just rewinding back two years, we've had a future high street fund. Um, mm -hmm. There was then a, a series of towns who were appointed to the towns fund programme. We've had levelling up round one, and I think levelling up round two is just launched just prior to Easter, but applications are required. I think it's the first week in July, so a relatively short time frame. We're seeing quite a lot of opportunities there with authorities requiring support. Um, going forward, um, shared prosperity has also been announced. And uh, whilst that's not a competitive process, um, applicants from the authorities still need to provide business cases to central government in terms of those interventions to access the allocations to each authority. So a huge amount in that area. Um, and again, that just going back to that piece I touched upon around the multidisciplinary piece, it's not just financial, but having um, assurance and a, a clear story to tell in terms of uh, build costs, property valuations, planning, all of those sorts of things to get a project away. So um, that's going to be, I think, quite a dominating feature and um, likely to see quite a bit of that on the framework over the next mm -hmm. 12 to 18 months, really. Definitely. Thank you. Thanks, Wayne. You're very welcome. Uh, brilliant. Thank you very much. Comprehensive. Lots of critical services. Uh, and I think there's uh, how can you ensure that this is the most cost effective approach again directed to, to Grant Thornton? Uh, <laughs> um, I think this is probably uh, one probably supported by us in, in kind of the, <laughs> the process of, of your appointment to uh, some of our recent sort of cases. So, but uh, if you could tackle that, that'd be great. Um, yeah, absolutely fine. So just probably worth just focusing on the example that Hannah touched upon in terms of the Wakefield piece. So a lot of these um, call-offs are um, on a competitive basis, a relatively low quick sort of request in terms of a short proposal and a fee. Um, in terms of where Grant Thornton pitches um, the fees that it um, uh, bids on, 
obviously we're involved with a number of different frameworks we've got a good idea in terms of what market expectations are and typically speaking we'll we'll tend to set um uh, day rates based on i suppose a bit of a sort of a feel for what uh, each of those frameworks looks like um and then we'll give, be really transparent in terms of taking those day rates giving a clear view in terms of the number of days to complete those activities and then multiplying those two numbers together to land on a fee. Um, the only thing just to sort of add in as a sort of a, a bit of a, an add on to that is where let's say there's more specialist support around tax, VAT and some of those more complex services, those rates might just be a tad high just reflecting the complexity and the fact that um, there's obviously specialist people within our organisation um, who can do that and that, that can't really be replicated across um, all of us in the firm um, and probably a good thing I'm not wanting to be a tax advisor um, but, but yeah just to just to note um, it's a case of those market rates and then equally if it's a case of you're looking to work with an envelope let's have a conversation because typically speaking we can frame a scope to fit within that envelope. Definitely Wayne and that's one of the questions we tend to ask isn't it Lloyd sort of what's the what's what's the sort of the budget on it because I think that's really important that we understand that um, and we endeavour to get you the best value for that budget. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and I've got one final one, coupled with actually a couple more. So I think whatever we can't cover off here, I think the, the aim is to follow up with a Q&A sort of document. So this is all the way upstream, uh, Lucy. So what uh, differentiates, uh, straight, for, straight for the jugglers, uh, what differentiates YPO, uh, YYPO? This we can probably <laughs> lend some thoughts to this also. <laughs> Um, so YPO versus another framework, do you think that's that's? I presume, I presume so. Um, <laughs> I presume so. so I would probably say that anybody that has worked with YPO will hopefully know that we are extremely helpful in the first instance and we offer as much support as possible. Um, I do think that our frameworks are usually structured in a way with our customers at the forefront of our minds when we do that. So I think in anything we do, we always consider everything possible that a customer will need. Um, and we do a lot of pre-engagement before that. So I think in terms of just generically, I think um, we are sort of well known for being supportive and helpful. Um, and it's part of our mottos anyway as well. Um, in terms of this, the framework, I would say that it, um, it offers a, a really great solution and we've got a really great managed service provider with consultancy plus there as well that, that is offering that support um, and delivering a very good service as well with what they do so um, I think that, that those hand in hand to me make it a really beneficial um, reason to come to YPO and to consultancy plus in turn so um, I think we, we do offer a, a, a good a good framework in place so I hope that answers it it's probably a bit um broad but I don't think there's any sort of direct absolutely. reasons to be honest I think <laughs> absolutely yeah, I I think I'd absolutely yeah. echo the, the point on on it being sort of people led I think you've always got the conversation around sort of people versus sort of tech and, and I'd like yeah. to think that actually in the partnership with YPO and our supply sort yeah. of chain it's, it's it's very much sort of felt by, by authorities and that we will sort of provide the tech that will enable so sort of lots of sort of the the sort of procurements and sort of engagements and conversations to happen but yeah. absolutely it's the people led solution or aspect that that really sort of brings some real value to to our client base so yeah. thank you very much yeah. for that lucy um i've seen we've got something coming through how does uh how, how does the ypo consultants plus framework fit with local authorities who may want a supplier to act as a technical advisor for a multi-year period and cover a number of projects rather than a project by project basis okay uh is that technical advisor also is that one that you might want to sort of take on yeah, I'll, I'll try and to do. Support, or, or, I suppose <laughs> do, yeah. leverage the relationship yep. with suppliers to, to, I suppose, put them in a position to act as a technical advisor. I think the first thing to, to um, bear in mind is we do need to make sure that it sits within the realm of the framework that we that, that we work in. So we will always look at that. There are certain areas, particularly I'd say legal um, and certain financial advice that we don't tend to get involved in and give. And, and, and that would probably be a conversation that you'd have with YPO to almost say, is there another framework that would be better suited to that? But if we tick and go, do you know what, we're happy with the, it, where it sits in terms of the advice and, and, the, and the services. I think the first thing we'd always do, Lloyd, is have that conversation with the, the client. What are you trying to achieve? What does that look like? Why are you looking at, a, a, you know, such a long programme of events? How can we look at that for you? And what does that look like? 
but we do have um, we have engagements that that, have, that go on for quite some time, don't we, Lloyd? We have ongoing requirements with clients where they have a an ongoing need to have um, uh, it might be a PSC, it might be a large organisation that's working with them in an ongoing period. So I think it would go back to the fact of we'd make sure that you're working on the, the right framework. Where we would make sure that we would understand what you're trying to achieve, and then we would look to if uh, either put that into the into an order for you, um, but to break it down and look at whether you'd need to work with individual PSCs or looking at more like a consultancy base. And then we would also make sure that we're breaking it down into the right milestones for you. Um, and um, yeah, I, I think we would do that, but making sure we get value in there, lock down those costs for you. Um, I think that's the right answer. I'm just trying to think if I've got the question right, Lloyd. Yeah, I think so. And I think just, just to add to it, I think that the gift of the framework is that you've got, um, you know, quite a broad sort of supply chain sort of covering various sort of areas and sort of skill sets. But we do have a number of sort of delivery sort of methods and sort of ways to engage sort of providers. So Grant Thorns will be very yeah. familiar in that. We, we have engagements that are delivered on a fixed price sort of output or, or sort of a sort of milestone based sort of arrangements or sort of time, time materials. Sometimes in that sort of technical advisor role, you might have sort of consultants sort of brought in to, to help develop a, a scope in which case uh, sometimes it's a sort of TNM sort of basis uh, or, or again sort of fixed yeah. price so we've got a multitude yeah. of ways that we can engage with a, a good sort of core base of suppliers and an extensive supply chain to kind of support authorities uh, yeah. with that so yeah wide and yeah, varied. That's a good point and, and we do have within Consultancy Plus as well we, we, we're all from services procurement but we do have other teams and other practices so we can always lean on that their support as well depending on what the requirement is but yeah, Lloyd's absolutely right that in terms of we will look at the makeup of your requirement in different ways um, and look at how that is best catered for um, and how that is best mimicked. Um, but yeah, I, I think we'd, we'd, we'd enjoy to have those conversations with you and it won't be a conversation we'd be having for the first time. We will be able to give you, um, you know, expert ex, um, you know, advice on it. Okay, brilliant. Uh, mindful of time I think we've got a question and I've got a couple pre loaded ones but uh, do let me know Hannah if you've got time uh, otherwise we'll follow up with uh, the Q&A sheet following but uh, we have a known supplier that we would like to work with how would it how would it be if we want to go out to them but also include others to ensure that we can carry out some benchmarking how does this work um, okay. Um, okay read by me I could probably respond to that <laughs> my, uh, my, myself so it's from from me to me um, <laughs> So the, as sort of explained from, from elsewhere at the top, we, it's the process itself we like to simplify in that there are only a core few steps that you need to, to, to kind of satisfy in terms of your sort of public sector sort of procurement sort of rulings and all that. So the, the framework, and what Lucy sort of said also from the top, that we've gone through a competitive process to be awarded as the managing sort of managing provider of that framework. Uh, and in that you are appointing Consultancy Plus essentially to kind of deliver that piece, which is then uh, sort of subcontracted. Um, so there are a couple of sort of key things that we will do. We can onboard the supplier. So that's where sort of HANA um, has a sort of core focus around sort of bringing on sort of suppliers and sort of making sure that sort of compliance and registration onboarding is satisfied. Um, it's then really um, in simple form, a couple of sort of contract sort of documents to, to that point. I think we'll, we'll do our um, uh, sort of usual things of sort of making sure that we've got sort of right things in place and sort of considerations around how the engagement should sort of run. But um, quite simply, you can engage a named provider. So if you're in conversation with a provider that you want to sort of use and sort of engage, uh, we can sort of do that wrap around to the compliance quite, quite simply. Um, Elsa, uh, Hannah, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that, uh, essentially sort of engaging a named provider to deliver pieces. Um, um, no, like you said, engaging a named supplier in a straightforward process is, is really easy. It's, it's um, like Lloyd said, it all like boils down to the contracting and making sure that that supplier is, is compliant against the framework requirements, etc. But if there is a need for benchmarking, because that was the second part of the question, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> is that yes. we can, we, we are able to, um, yeah, vend out for interest, well, see if it's an area of work that suppliers can work within, see if we can get some benchmarking costs, but it may be that we'll need to have a discussion around whether we look into that being a, a small competition, just so that you've covered your sort of areas of what are required for compliance, etc. Mm. We do also retain some benchmarking costs anyway from some of our suppliers, so we'd be able to use those as examples um, you know, if that was needed, we can call upon those if, if need be. 
Yeah, def- yeah. I, mean, I would just, just say it's exactly what Hannah and Lloyd have said. If you wanted to, us to engage with a known supplier for you, absolutely, we can do that. It's very simple. If you then want to then go, actually, I want to work with that supplier, but I want to check that I'm paying and I'm getting value for money and they are the right supplier, we can do that for you as well. And we can do that, as Hannah said, we have extensive knowledge in terms of benchmarking. The beauty of actually being part of Read is that we have the expertise, the data that comes in via Read, um, but also Lloyd and I do an awful lot of work with some, uh, a piece of kit called Horsefly we use, plus we have all our suppliers to use. And as Wayne said, you know, they will know what they should be paying and where they put themselves in the market. So in terms of um, you could be absolutely assured that we will come back to you and go, yep, yeah, that is ballpark figure or, you know, actually we look like it looks like we can, you know, get reduce some costs for you. So that will be part of the process we're happy to do. Thank you, Lloyd. Um, as we've only got three minutes left, were there any others that we would want to just cover quickly, Lloyd? Or um, I, I think that's probably, I think we've yeah. got a couple, but I think it's in, in the interest of time. Uh, I think, is it worth a sort of follow up? Um, yeah sort of document because uh, I think it's, yeah we've got so yeah we can part. provide a QA and a <laughs> document Lucy can't we for afterwards yeah yeah we can we can share that and we can share the presentation um yeah. recording as well so yeah we'll be able to do that as um, with everybody great well yeah that brings us to to a close then um obviously thank you for attending it's really appreciated there is some contact details for key um people on this end of the document which will obviously be provided um, to all of those that have attended um, but yeah thanks so, so much for being part of this it's been yeah a great session so thank you thank, thank you everyone. everyone thanks Hannah thank, thank you very much you. to the Grant Thornton team uh, yeah. yeah thank you Grant Thornton thanks so, so much very welcome cheers all have a good day bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.